Have you ever wondered how to turbo a car or even how a turbo works? We designed this video tutorial series on how to show you guys at home how to do it the right way. Hi guys, I'm Chris Jenner. I've been in motorsports for 15 years and been turbocharging anything under the moon. We're gonna teach you step by step on how to turbocharge your vehicle and do it right. For this series, we're gonna be installing this turbo kit in my buddy Devin's BMW M3. He's bringing it to the shop right now. All right, guys, let's talk about the magical thing we call a turbocharger. It has two major components. The two major components are the compressor housing, the turbine housing, also known as the cold side and the hot side. It all starts here, though. The exhaust gases come through the back side of the turbo, fed by the engine. The exhaust gases then spin that turbine wheel, sends the shaft speed into the front, and then sucks that cold air from outside the car through the turbo, compressing it boosting the air, and then setting it right out the side of the turbo to where we'll get to later. So let's take this one step further. Let's check out the goods inside this thing. It all starts here with Turbo by Garrett's proprietary billet compressor wheel, then dubbed it the GTX. This thing is a work of art. It's also the most technologically advanced compressor wheel on the market. Now, let's move to the other side. The other side of the turbo features a much more robust steel wheel. This thing will see over 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of people ask me this, how fast does a turbo actually spin? To be fair, it's insane. 280,000 RPM. That's higher than any Honda I've ever seen. Now let's talk about oil. Oil is a very crucial part to a turbo. Because this has dual ball bearings and needs something to lubricate them, oil pressure is also very crucial. ATP Turbo designed the orifice in this guy to restrict the pressure. That keeps from blowing the seals inside the turbo and causing a really nasty exhaust gas mess with mixed with oil. You've seen some cars on the road, you know what I'm talking about. Another crucial thing, these two ports on the side of the turbo are for coolant. The coolant keeps the center section cold, also keeps the oil from cooking inside the turbo. The last but not least, the oil comes out the bottom of the turbo, and that goes back to the oil pan, completes the cycle. Now we need to find a way to regulate the pressure that's coming out of this guy. Now to do so, I'm gonna need two more things. I'm gonna need a manifold, and I'm also gonna need a wastegate. The way the wastegate works is it introduces a controlled exhaust leak from the manifold. When this valve opens, it then atmospherically dumps the gases to slow down the turbine speed. That regulates the boost. There's another type of wastegate out there. It's called an internal wastegate. That is controlled in the exhaust manifold side of the turbo, and it regulates it back into the exhaust stream down the downpipe mostly seen in OEM manufactured turbos or small, small turbos. For this build, we chose an external wastegate. The reason we chose this is because it's more used in motorsports applications. It also creates a little bit less back pressure and it'll blow flames. Who doesn't like flames? So now after the turbocharger's compressed all the air and it's piping hot, we're gonna need a way to cool it down. That's where we use the intercooler. How an intercooler works is it takes the hot compressed air from the turbocharger into one side, goes through the middle of the intercooler, it then cools it from the ambient air coming from the front of the vehicle, it then comes out the other side at a much lower temperature, thus creating more horsepower. So the last part of the turbo system is the blow-off valve. The blow-off valve is what relieves the pressure in the turbo system once the throttle plate closes. Once that throttle plate closes, that pressure has to go somewhere. If not, it has to back all the way to the turbo and cause the turbo to stop spinning and flutter. The sound can be cool, but it's really harsh on the turbo and can damage it. One of the best things about turbos is the sounds they make, and the blow-off valve is the most iconic sound ever in a turbo system. For this, I brought on my friend Devin. Devin, can you show us, or tell us, what the sound of compressor surge sounds like, the sound you don't want to hear? And now, a proper blow-off sound. Thanks, Devin. All right, guys, now you know how a whole turbo system works. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for the next episode where we get to put all this great stuff in the car.